What's up guys, this is Rise and welcome to another video with the new GBL season upon us now and lots of players may be getting into GBL for the first time, the Pokemon Go Battle League with lots of new updates, lots of exciting new move differentiations that people that have been playing it for years like me are excited about and excited to mix things up some people are just learning the basics some people have recently watched the world championships are just getting into pvp for the first time and want to improve i recently got a message saying rise i've been playing pvp for six seasons and i haven't really seen any improvement what do you recommend i do so we're making this video about the top three tips to get better and improve at PVP. If you're new around here, you don't know who I am, you're not following my channel, totally cool. I, uh, My name's Chris, or Rise, Rise to Occasion. I have been playing PVP since around 2020 and have had a decent amount of success in different formats, whether that's the Go Battle League. I think I've hit the highest rank every season since maybe season two, except for once I missed it in season three. And then uh, in the play Pokemon circuit, I've been able to win um, three regional titles and runner up at an international championship in North America last year. So I have been able to have a little bit of success in this game, and I'm going to provide you with my top three tips about the skills involved that will help you improve whether your goals are just to maybe hit ace rank in the Go Battle League, maybe climb up to expert or even hit that legend rank to impress your friends and just have fun and improve and trying to uh, get better at Pokemon Go PvP because one of the great things about Pokemon Go is there's different ways to play this game for everybody. And for me, PvP is what I'm most passionate about and I love the competitive aspect of it. And there's a lot more skill involved than some people that aren't as um, informed are aware. So without further ado, let's get into it. And we're gonna go for tip number one, which is get your typings down. And shout out to my friend Axon who helped me record some situations um, and some battles in this video. So when I say get your typings down, it should be like the back of your hand, right? Well, how often do you really look at the back of your hand? That's kind of a weird saying. But when I played my first ever tournament and I really didn't know what I was doing, I played a local tournament in like Fitchburg, Wisconsin. I managed to go three and one just because... I knew my typings and I knew if they swapped a Scrafty, I swapped a Wigglytuff. And that's the example I used here <laughs> because it's uh, nostalgic for me. And being quick on the swap is another thing that goes hand in hand with knowing your typings down. Knowing, okay, they swapped this. I have a great answer for this. Rather than if they had swapped, if Axon had swapped the Scrafty right, and I had stayed in for a long time with my Registeel before realizing, oh wait, I have Wigglytuff, that could have spelled trouble in the end game because I would have taken a lot of damage on that Registeel. So recognizing you have a great um, counter, and then this should just be automatic, right? Understanding, I wanna go for the Disarming Voice, that's the fairy move against the water type, that's the neutral hitting move. Now we see in this situation, I have a bad lead, right? So I'm gonna switch out because this is bad for my champ, a fighter against a fairy type Pokemon. Not a good matchup. I switched Charge Bug. And unfortunately, I'm met by a Clod Sire. So Axe in here in a really good situation. Ground type against Electric type. And not that this matters too much, but in this situation, we want to be going for the X's or it's the more efficient move. Both of these are resisted, but we understand that Discharge is double resisted by the ground typing. We understand that X Scissor is single resisted because ground does not resist um, bug, but poison does resist bug. So Axon is gonna be going for Sludge Bomb here, and this painful matchup is going to play out, but we notice the quick swap there, which allows Axon to really capitalize and take advantage of this situation. And knowing your typings, getting those down, is the first priority, I think, when trying to learn the basics of PvP and trying to improve. It can be intimidating for someone that's new into Pokemon in general because there's 18 different typings. And there's a lot of different combinations, so I understand that can be intimidating, but whether you treat it like uh, like you're studying for a college test and you make flashcards, what's effective against what, or um, I think there's certain websites dedicated to uh, like typing charts and such that people have used um, 
I think it's the first and most important thing you kind of want to learn in terms of PvP. And now here's a situation where we're going to see Axon use a common safe swap in the Go Battle League, the Sableye. And notice, we're going to swap instantly into the Lickitung. Now, if we were any slower here, this could spell trouble for Lickitung. Because Sableye is such a safe Pokemon that it can really hit back against most things. It can get to these foul plays, which do a nice chunk of damage relatively fast. So we're over farming here. We're over farming. We're going to take another foul play. We understand that Lickitung can live another foul play here. But we understand also that because we're a normal type, these Ghost Shadow Claws do not do very much to us. So we're going to go for the Power Whip. Sableye is only a few Shadow Claws away from the next foul play. One. And if we were a little bit slower, imagine that Sableye might have been able to get to that next foul play. And that could have spelled trouble for us. So we get off a parting Power Whip because we were quick to swap. And we take advantage of that situation. We saw the Ghost typing. And we... Uh, Swapped our normal type right away. This is the last example for tip number one. We have a negative lead Sableye into Azumarill. So we're going to swap the Swampert. And this is going to be an example of Axon swapping really slowly and how that can be detrimental. So we swap the Swampert and Axon does three bubbles and then swaps Cresselia. Now, normally this is a great matchup for Cresselia. Because Cresselia has access to the move Grass Knot, right? We talk about typings. Grass Knot, double super effective against Swampert. It's able to one-shot the Swampert, completely knock it out from full health. But when you give Swampert such a head start, slow on the swap. And that's kind of what we're talking about in this tip. Get your typings down along with being quick on the swap kind of goes hand in hand with that. Quick on the reaction, which will develop over time in Go Battle League. Knowing if they swap this, I want to swap this, essentially. But because we saw the delayed swap there and the Swampert getting a big head start against this Cresselia, this is going to allow Swampert to really spam off these Hydro Cannons in what normally is a favorable matchup for the Cresselia. We're going to see Swampert actually elect to overfarm here by one. Could have thrown right there. But Swampert is going to shield and is actually going to flip this matchup here, landing the Hydro Cannon against Cresselia and knocking it out. So that is tip number one for you, knowing your typings. Because like I said, when I didn't really know anything about PvP, but I knew my typings, I was still able to react to swaps. And if you can line things up, you can still find some success in the Go Battle League. And we move on now where we get to a little more advanced, and that is going to be tip number two, which is going to be learning to count energy. And learning to count energy is going to go hand in hand with what we call catching, which is kind of what is one of the more stylish things in PvP is when your opponent throws an attack and you're able to catch that attack onto something else. So that can be really useful. And it also goes hand in hand with tip number one because you need to know your typings in order to make effective catches, right? So Ax and I here are in the Annihilate Mirror Match. We're gonna go for the Shadow Ball and he catches the Shadow Ball, double resisted onto the normal type Lickitung. And that is so much energy now that goes to waste. And we are now gonna stay in here because we can deal some super effective counter damage we're expecting Axon to go for the Power Whip because we're keeping track of the energy and we catch the Power Whip, hopefully, onto our Feral Thorn. So we're going back and forth with the catches in this situation. He caught the Shadow Ball on Lickitung. We catch the Double Resisted Power Whip on the Feral Thorn. And you know that we can only do this if we're counting energy, if we know when each other are getting to those charge attacks. So that is a really important thing in the Go Battle League. And I will touch on that in a second if you have no idea how we have any idea like when we're getting to those charge attacks. Power Whip coming through 
is going to grab a shield from the Liquid Tongue. And then check this out. Axon catches the next Power Whip onto a Skarmory. That is double resisted. What a catch. So you see the awareness of these uh, catches and these counting energy. And if you're not sure how we're able to keep track of when... Um, of when each other are getting to these moves over time for certain players we actually will memorize at the highest level the exact energy so we understand that for example um lick a tongue right running lick that's three energy per lick and its body slam would be 35 energy so it'd be 12 licks to the first body slam then then uh 12 then 11 so i know that sounds really nuanced and and stuff but more so than that what a lot of people do and what I generally do to make things easier is you just memorize how many fast attacks it takes to get to that move. So a zoom roll, which you see on the screen now, is the most common example because it's pretty easy to count, right? Bubble's a slower move. It's a three-turn fast attack, which we'll touch on later. And you can just pretty easily remember with a zoom roll, it's five to ice beam, it's six to play rough, it's seven to hydro pump. And... If you want a like really good resource to learn how many moves it takes to get on these certain things, I'm at pvpoke.com. This is not sponsored or anything. This is just probably the best resource in terms of learning this stuff. If you go to rankings, it'll show you all the best Pokemon this coming season in terms of the Go Battle League. You can also use a team builder if you want to like look at building a team. And then there's this little bubble you can check that says show move counts and boom, it shows you for Claude Sire, it takes, um, it shows you Poison Sting is a two turn fast attack, eight to Earthquake, seven to Stone Edge. And the reason there's a minus is that is because next time it's going to be seven, next time it's going to be six. Um, for Carbink, Rock Throw is a two turn fast attack and it's going to be nine Rock Throws every time to Rock Slide. It's going to be 12 Rock Throws every time to Moonblast. So that's kind of how you read this. And this helps you learn how to count energy. And if you want to go like one step further, this isn't really necessary. But you can look at the actual battle themselves. And then um, you can like look at how much energy Poison Sting generates, right? It's so like nine energy and see how much energy Stone Edge is. And some people will actually keep track of the actual energy itself as opposed to counting the moves. But I think counting the moves is definitely where you want to start. And that's really all that's necessary. You don't really need to keep track of the actual energy itself in most situations. So we saw that first battle with all the catches. And then we go into this second situation where we're going to see the Azumarill mirror match here. In the counting the energy tip. So Azumarill, I would say, is one of the easiest Pokemon to uh, track the energy. And you also have your own energy to look at to keep track of we're able to catch the play rough onto our registeel and now axon understands that it takes 16 turns to get to our zap cannon so watch he does five bubbles which is the equivalent of 15 turns he waits and then he catches on the clod sire a really impressive catch catching the double resisted zap cannon onto the clod sire tracking that energy catching right when we get to the zap cannon and uh setting himself up and uh, just like think about that that energy that could have been used and done a great deal of damage on the azumarill now gets soaked up by the clod sire and does much less damage so um i think we play out this battle who wins who wins oh i guess we don't have we don't play out the full way <laughs> Oh, but no, there was actually one more example here. What goes hand in hand with catching is you also want to be aware of when your opponent might go for a catch and not try and fall for it. So you kind of learn that awareness over time. So what we're going to see here is Axon is going to take out my Azumarill with the play rough. We are going to come in with Registeel, fire off our Zap Cannon here. Let's see if Axon decides to let it go or stay in. Um, or shield, rather, is what I meant to say. We come in with our Skeledurge here. Not the best situation, 
but not the worst. Skeleturge not threatened by Azumarill's charge attacks, only threatened by the bubble damage. And we know that he might try and go for a catch here. So we're actually patient and we don't throw the Shadow Ball right away. We actually wait and we avoid the catch. So we saw examples of us making catches against each other. Here's an example of avoiding the catch, not allowing them to, uh, to make that catch, which sometimes can be really critical in winning games. I hope you guys have uh, found some of this information helpful so far. And we move on to my third and final tip of the video for uh, trying to learn and improve on PvP. And in this third video, it is going to be maybe the most important of them all, proper move timing. Tip number three. So if you don't know what proper move timing is, <clears throat> essentially in Pokemon Go PvP, you have different turn durations of fast attacks and like the main series game you have turns right you take your time you press your move the pokemon uses that move might take 30 seconds or whatnot um in pokemon go pvp a turn is essentially a half a second so you're constantly tapping the screen and turns are constantly happening now you have one through five turn duration fast attacks an example of a one turn fast attack you might know it would be dragon breath right dragon breath is just constantly going constantly doing damage two turn would be mud shot like you're going to see with Whiskash here three turn would be azumarill and in this first battle here i'll actually do it uh to 1.5 times speed Whiskash um is going to be wanting to throw after one four seven the reason for that is the way it lines up you see i throw after seven that's 14 turns compared to 15 turns we're only letting one free turn through from the azumarill and if you want a more in-depth recap of fast attack timing fast move timing um i have a video which i can link in the description in how to master your move timing where we have an entire chart dedicated to it and such so i'd say this might be the most important part of pvp that kind of separates like people that are maybe mid like veteran range to like expert legend range because once you get to that like expert legend range i feel like people just kind of have their move timing down at this point and the move timing can be critical so in this battle you're gonna see axe and i both throw on proper move timing and then check this out we're gonna come in with skeledurge which is a five turn fast attack incinerate it's very unique it's the only five turn fast attack so it's very important for axon to time his moves as good as possible because he doesn't want to miss out on any licks he wants to ideally do four licks and then throw his move because then he's not giving me any wasted energy he's not wasting any licks worth of damage and axon was able to do that he was able to do four licks and then throw his move now he's against a three turn charger bug so he does three licks and throws his move i know this could be a lot of information for um people that aren't as familiar with this stuff but we see now the charger bug mirror match and this is going to be a close finish charger bug firing off x scissor here axon is going to fire off an attack here i know he's going to get to two x scissors so i'm debating whether i want to shield or not i do fire off the x scissor i lose the charge attack priority it's unfortunate i decide to let it go because i feel like my win condition is landing a disarming voice on lick a tongue and look at this right as we get there the lick knocks out so if axon had not thrown on proper timing and we didn't really plan for the game to go like this. <laughs> this just kind of happened perfectly. If Axon earlier in the game had not thrown on proper move timing, if he had given me extra energy by maybe throwing after two licks, after three licks, I would have reached this disarming voice here and won the game. But because he threw on perfect move timing, this final lick KO'd just before I reached the disarming voice and actually made the difference in the game. So that shows you that move timing can make the difference in the game. And then for uh, 
partial just comedic enjoyment in this third example <laughs> Axon's gonna throw on bad move timing which was painful for him as a as a uh, former world champion but he's gonna give me some free energy in this game and uh we're gonna see if it changes anything so with cash against the zoom roll it's gonna be the same teams and you see me throwing after four that's theoretically eight turns from four mud shots versus nine turns from three bubbles so we're only giving one turn of free energy and that's essentially what you want to do in move timing is only give your opponent one free turn of energy we actually catch the move on our skeleturge here and get an entire free incinerate in the process and now we're going to see skeleturge fire off this disarming voice Disarming voice coming through. And look, Axon throws right away. See, we get the entire incinerate through for free. If he had done maybe four licks, maybe we don't get off this disarming voice. So it shows how critical move timing can be. We actually grab the shield and uh, we come in with charge a bug here. We're going to fast forward a little bit. Um, and uh, <laughs> we, uh, we've got Whisk Cash against Charge a Bug here. Whisk Cash going to fire off the Scald. This is going to put Charge a Bug relatively low. Gets the debuff as well. Very nice. I think he still has like a low health. Oh, does he still have all three Pokemon actually? Yeah, he does. This is actually a little bit tricky still. I don't fall for the CMP. I want to over farm energy here. He is debuffed. I just got to make sure he doesn't catch on one of his other Pokemon. So I'm trying not to fall for that. So I wait. Waiting. Something that we touched on in the previous tip. And then we're just going to uh, farm down and lend the discharge. So you see Axon throwing on perfect timing in that first game allowed him to beat me. And because he wasn't throwing on perfect timing in the second game, I was able to flip it that time. So it shows you the importance of move timing. And that gives you uh, the three tips. So to do a little bit of a recap of what we covered, we had tip number one, which was get those typings down. No, if your opponent swaps this, I swap that. Swapping quickly and throwing the correct moves at the correct things is the first thing you want to be able to learn in PvP and can be really huge. Tip number two we went over was learning those energy counts. If you don't know how many moves and it and um you need to learn that Th that's totally fine and understandable go to pvpoke.com learn the energy counts of different pokemon and that can be huge and also one thing i didn't really touch on too much is over farming as well because if you know how much energy it takes for your opponent to get to a move over farming can be critical what over farming is is knowing oh he doesn't reach his move for a long time so I can go like two past my move and then throw that way. If I knock it out, I have extra energy going into my next matchup. So that's something we didn't even touch on in this video in our top three tips. But that's another valuable tip as well as over farming. And it kind of goes hand in hand with counting energy. And then what we just touched on was proper move timing. How to master your move timing. I'll leave a link to that video as well in the description or maybe I can do it like on the screen right now if that works YouTube um but yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video I hope you're looking forward to the new go battle league season I'm looking forward to it myself if you're new here and you enjoyed this content feel free to leave a like subscribe to the channel if you're new comment down below all comments are appreciated uh feel free to check out channel memberships we're gonna do some exclusive content with exclusive streams and exclusive videos this coming season and uh, I look forward to seeing you guys along the way. All that said, thank you so much for watching. And I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.